Hey, are you ready? Are you ready? This is where it starts to get rugged. This is where we have to start thinking deep. This is where we're going to pull up some information. And it's important. It's not therapy. It is not something that is just going to happen overnight. These are emotions. These are experiences. These are things that literally have designed you to be exactly who you are today because it, they happened it happened to you it happened for you it happened with you what we want to talk about today is reliving your past there are healthy ways to relive your past part of that comes down to acceptance you've already accepted actually as a matter of fact whether you choose to accept it or not it happened but how you process that information is who you are today so many people are going to find reasons to make excuses for their behavior for their drinking an excuse is different than a reason we drink for a specific reason we have this habit for a reason but that's not an excuse you can't blame that on anything so what we really want to do is process our past in a healthy way trust me I am a survivor in, of many things and I know how difficult things are but understanding the process is the first step to overcoming it so let's talk about reliving your past you know how much you wish want desire nothing will be different. We live in the illusion that things could have been different. If it could have happened a different way, it would have. Your feelings about the past don't change the past, and they never will. The way you feel about your past is why you keep going back to it. The worst thing that will ever happen to us is an emotion, is a feeling, the breakup. You don't miss that person. You miss the feeling you had with them. You don't miss that guy, that girl. You miss the emotions that you were having when they were around. We latch on from a human standpoint, from the best we know how, from our neurological conditioning, and go, I want more or I don't want that. That was a good experience, that was a bad experience. Certain things are horrible. Bad things happen to amazing people. That doesn't mean they deserve them, and it doesn't mean that you have got to punish yourself for a lifetime of something you didn't ask for. Giving your emotions away to the past is literally punishing yourself for someone else's mistakes. Maybe you feel guilt for the thing you did when you were drinking, when you were out of your mind, whatever it is. Did you feel that? Good. We're done now thinking about it over and over and over and over and wishing something could have been different is literally taking the the whip from the corner putting yourself in the corner and just punish just whipping yourself nothing is changing you are just leaving deeper scars that's it so many of us that have practiced punishing ourselves with alcohol or drugs or whatever or sex or anything are literally just punishing ourselves because we think we have to elongate this process until we get it. The point is, is we continue reliving this thing, bringing it back up, and having all of the same emotional responses that led us to develop the bad habit. We're keeping ourselves in the same exact position. Now that you know that information, it's up to you to continue doing that or not. You know that it's unhealthy. You know that nothing could have been different. You know that even if it was different, not much would have changed. Maybe it was a loss in the family. That's how it went down. In the aspect, people ask me all the time, Cody, if you could go back, would you have continued drinking? If I was the same person then, with the same situations, with the same thoughts, with the same everything, then yes, I would have continued drinking. Nothing would be different. Because this version of me didn't exist back then. 
my liver failure was inevitable. Inevitable. There's no other way it could have gone. That's how it was supposed to happen. That's why it happened. You could have put me in this situation, in that situation, and less alcohol over there, more alcohol over there. It doesn't matter. Everything that happened prior to that is why I continued that path. You would literally have to change everything that ever happened to me, ever, since birth, for me to be a different person and not kill myself. This is why, when we wish we knew this information then, we wish that we could have changed this. It doesn't matter. You're wishing, you're wanting, you're dwelling, you're punishing isn't and would not ever change anything. And yeah, that sucks. But you're here. You're smarter. You're far more intelligent. You're far more educated. You've punished yourself long enough. You don't have to continue killing yourself with that habit, with this habit, or even with those thoughts. They're not helping you move forward. You're helping you move forward right this second. Thinking about the things that happen to you don't change anything. Reliving your trauma, drinking and binging, or bringing attention to your past only destroys your future. Your future self is waiting for you and you're in the past. The only way that your past exists is if you rethink it, relive it, and bring it into the present. And even when you bring it into the present, it's only real in your mind. I can't grab something from the past. I wish that rock wasn't there and they wouldn't have tripped. I can't grab anything from the past. It's only in your imagination. It's only in your mind. This complex just thing that is controlling this meat suit and all this stuff is an idiot. Is as, as versatile and dynamic as your mind is, it can't tell the difference between a thought and something that's actually happening. I'll drink to that. I forgot it. I'm so passionate, I forgot to drink. We're drinking. It can't tell. The science behind it. It's very simple. Your brain can trick you and does trick you every single day to thinking that something is happening when it's not. This is what anxiety is all about. You're reliving something or you're thinking about the future. What if it doesn't work out? What if he says this? What if she says that? You're having an emotional reaction, a physical reaction to something you're thinking. 99% of the stuff we fear and, and have anxiety about never happen. That's why your brain's an idiot. You are not, your brain is. It's another entity you gotta deal with. So if you look at the science behind this real quick, I can take a hot coal and light it up. I can, I can get a hot coal, put it in front of your face. You can smell it, you can see it. You can, you can literally feel the heat on your face. All of these specific conditions are convincing your mind that there's, there's a hot coal. It's taking all of the data and going, there's a hot flame, a coal burning right in front of me. If I were to take a piece of ice at that exact moment while your brain is focused on hot heat, cold, red, fire, burn, and then I put a piece of ice on your back, you will flip out because your brain is expecting pain. Your brain is expecting fire. Your brain is programmed and conditioned to fix itself and to protect itself. That's what it does. And what's more interesting with that exact analogy is your brain, even though it was just a piece of ice on your back, it will send the white blood cells. It will start healing something that isn't broken. It will start trying to fix what it thinks happened. That's how strong your mind is. This is why when you're here listening to me, you're strengthening the connection to your future self. You're strengthening the connection to water and healthy thoughts. You're literally transforming yourself with every word that falls out of my face. You're practicing. Knowing this information and then literally applying it to where you are now, imagine how many thoughts you had that you had an emotional reaction to that made you want to drink, that made you want to do that thing, say that thing, reach out for drama or accept that person or disregard the toxic behavior, all of that stuff. That's because your brain is reacting to something that isn't real. 
You are in control. It's your mind. If you weren't in control, you wouldn't be here. You see the feeling you have right now? That's something you're allowing. I didn't make you feel what you feel. You are in a position of reception. You choose to feel this now. This is a decision that you're making. And obviously you enjoy it because you're still here, right? I'll drink to that. I appreciate you. I'm proud of you. That's amazing. You're literally sitting in the vortex of reprogramming. How amazing is that? What? Drink to that. On that note, you've got to understand, and you know this, you've always known this, that when you bring up your past and you pull it into your present, it messes with you now, and what you do now prepares you for the future. So think about this. If you're diving into your past, and that's making you feel a certain way, and you've practiced rewarding that feeling with alcohol, which suppresses your emotions, and then when you go think about that thing again, it brings it back up, you think, you take a shot, you drink a beer, you do all this stuff, you're rerunning. Now, even if you're not consciously aware of what you're thinking about, you're still practicing that bad habit. It's still becoming, in the same way that I continue drinking water, is the same way that we continue punishing ourselves, whether we're aware of it or not. This is why reprogramming yourself is the most powerful thing that you will ever do for your, your entire life. You've already begun the process. It's already there. Everything that you've listened to prior to this is now a part of who you are. You can't take it back. You can't give it back. You could refund this entire program and you're still a better version of yourself. You're still someone that has listened to this information. It is inside your mind. You can't forget about it if you wanted to. It's that deep inside your mind right now. You've shown up for four weeks, for weeks you've been here. Of course this is a part of who you are. And more importantly, you enjoy the process. We get our hands on more information when we love what we're doing. And what you're doing is based in a place of love. You love yourself, so you do the things you don't like. So you allow new information in. So you spend less time in the past. Reliving the past, there is a healthy way of doing that. We'll talk about that soon. But for right now, I'm gonna drink to your success. What's interesting is I practice saying this so much. I practice living this every single day that I jump ahead. <laughs> Watch this. Your brain reacts the same to a thought as it does reality. The 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 neuro uh, the, uh, the print neuro <laughs> neurolog the mind neurologically fires the same to a thought as it does reality. Thinking about the experience is convincing your brain that it's happening now. Stay out of the past. This is what I was just saying. All right. So this is your key point is that you know that every time you think that thought, you're actually just getting better at thinking that thought. So we need to start thinking different thoughts or thinking about that thought in a different way. What is it teaching me? What am I learning from that? Why do I keep bringing that up? Why is that important to me? What's the point of that thought? Why is that what I cycle back to? Is that a thought I actually want to have or is that something I'm just good at bringing up? This is where holding grudges and all that stuff happens. I got people that have grudges over things that I totally forgot about. Why are you stuck in the past? Why do you keep bringing this up? Why is this a thing? Why do you go back? Actually, I don't even care why you do it. I know why you do it, because you're good at it. You've programmed yourself to care more about something I did opposed to something that I'm doing. This is why you have to look at your success right now and go, I haven't made it X amount of days sober and, I'm, I'm, and I had one mess up, right? This is why people look at relapsing and all that stuff so horrendously. I can't believe I messed up. Dude, do you know how long you went? One day or 10 days or 100 days? You're focused on that one day of natural human behavior opposed to the 100 days or the one day that you spent not doing the thing that was bad for you. That's the success right there. You go, dang, I went 100 days and then relapse on this day. I'm proud of me. Hell, at least it was just one day. Awesome. That's not a relapse, by the way. <laughs> That's just a bad day. You don't have to punish yourself, right? Your understanding of what that means is why we keep going back. We've practiced thinking that relapse and this and that, it's this big catastrophic thing and that we gotta restart and do all this stuff. That's, that's, that's just banana sandwiches. 
<laughs> doesn't look work like that, right? But I do want to talk about something that is really important. This is something that we do, something we're trained to do. It's 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 uh, based in survival, but it's also directly contributing to how you live your life. So let's talk about mental rehearsal is only healthy if you're using it to move forward. Viewing the movie of your life is healthy if you're using it to process a better way of doing something similar in your future for a better outcome. Can I do it better now? Mental rehearsal. So I want you to think about this real quick. I'm going to drink to that. How many times have you worked up anxiety just sitting here? And then you started thinking about that thing. What if they don't get back to me? What if she flips out? What if she takes it the wrong way? What if he goes back to that thing? What if he says this? Right? Now you're starting to feel it. Right? Just giving yourself some space, like what I just did, just literally just sit here and think for one second. Where does your mind go? Is it going back to what if? What can? Where does your brain go? Chances are you've practiced the what if it doesn't work out. So you, what happens is you're rerunning. This is disassociation. When you're rerunning that thing through your head, it's not even real. It hasn't happened yet. You're sitting here mental rehearsal. You're taking all of the logical information and creating a movie out of it in 25 different ways. And you know what's funny? 99% of the ways that you come up with that scenario always end badly. And the weirder part about that is that never happens. Unless that's some predictive behavior, then it's based in actuality. Then you're like, well, that's what he always does, so I can totally expect that. Interesting. Even though you know he's expecting that stuff, you, know, you see how easy it is to just not work yourself up because it's predictable? You knew he was going to say that. You knew she was going to do that. You knew they were going to react that way, so you didn't flip out. Why not? That's actually, you knew that they were going to get upset and you have zero anxiety over that. That's because it's expected. You're comfortable with that information. Yet we're uncomfortable with information that we don't even, that isn't even real. So you got to look at what you're practicing going, am I rerunning or am I, am I, what am I rehearsing? What am I practicing? One of the things we don't practice is what if it all works out? What if I get to the end of the program? What if I wake up tomorrow feeling like a brand new superhuman? What if I feel like I could take on the world tomorrow? Opposed to what we've practiced our whole life. What if I get nothing out of the program? If you keep thinking that thought, you're going to find reasons why you're getting nothing out of the program. Absolute fact. You're, pract you're reliving. You're creating a false reality in the same way that alcohol gives us false emotions, false connections, false bonds, all that stuff. You are having an emotional reaction to something that is not real. But what would you like to be real? Would you like to get a, a whole new version of you out of this program? Good. Program yourself to look for reasons why you're moving forward, why it's valuable, why you deserve it. You know you deserve it. You're here. So the mental rehearsal, you got to remember this. When I designed this program, I didn't design it from the aspect of, I really hope people get stuff out of this. I know from a scientific fact that this gets people results. I know this. You may not feel it at this point, but you have no choice but to accept it that you feel different. There's something new. There's, you have obtained new information. But I built this program under the absolute fact and belief and knowing that I'm going to do this the right way and people are going to get results. Not from stopping myself and going, I don't want to design something that people don't enjoy. I don't want to start until it's perfect. I just kept building. You see all the typos in here? Do you think I went and had to make it perfect before I did this? No. I did what I could with what I had from where I was at and then I keep moving. I keep doing things, keep building, keep growing. Every single word that falls out of my face is helping me become a better person. Now, maybe I'll come back through and, and you know fix all these typos and whatnot. I don't care. It's not some, If you have an emotional reaction to a typo, that's just something you're practicing. You're practicing being annoyed at a typo and disregarding all the information that's attached to the sentence. That's something you've practiced. You don't have to be annoyed. 
I'm not annoyed. <laughs> it's funny when I see it, I'm like, oh, but I'm human. I accept the fact that I'm human. I accept the fact that mistakes happen. I accept the fact that I do not strive for perfection, right? It's an illusion. It's not real. So with all of that said, when we mentally rehearse things that probably will not even happen in that way, then we're stunting our future because the way we rehearse things is based on how we've rehearsed it in the past. You've expected the worst, so you created the worst. You expected the violence, so you looked for, you played out all these violent scenarios. Your thoughts don't come from the future. They come from the past. They come from the experience. And everything you do right now becomes a part of your past. So if we're focusing on everything right now, thinking healthy thoughts and doing healthy things, mentally rehearsing things in a positive way, what if it all works out? Then that becomes the thing that you revert back to in the future. You go, what? Maybe the last time I was thinking healthy thoughts, something great happened. Then you just get good at practicing going back to the past, reliving the past that you're creating now. In the future, you're going to be the best version of yourself. You already are. And you're going to look back to moments like this and go, I remember how I was feeling. And I also remember putting in the work. I also remember overcoming that thing. The way you do things now becomes your past. And then future you can go back to the past that you created in a healthy way and use that as the fuel to make better decisions. Super duper powerful. But I do have some more to talk about here. Toxic people from your past don't deserve a place in your, your future. You are a victim of everything and everyone that has ever happened to you. Nobody that contributed to your unhealthy behavior needs to be in your present. I talked about this today very deeply. I'm going to drink water before I talk about this. You know this. You know this. Who are you surrounded by? Who's directly contributed to your downfall? I know you can think of a bunch of people. Probably one specific person. But are we blaming that person or were they directly contributing to the environment that basically influenced your behavior? I want to talk about influence, but I'm going to drink first. You ready? Here we go. The way that I talk about this is if you and I were best friends, and we are, think about this, but if you and I lived in the same house, how would your life be different? How do you think? Imagine. How would it be different if every time you walked in the room and had a question, I was really excited to hear from you? And I'm like, dude, that's awesome. That's amazing. I love that. Try this, do this, do that. Uh, great. Hey, drink water. Hey, you're killing it. Good job, man. When you were having a bad day, I'm sitting here going, hey, man, I'm, I'm here for you. What's up? Cool. I'm still happy. I'm giving you my shoulder, but I'm not sacrificing myself. And every single time you saw me, I was building something to help somebody else. Every time that we connected, I was eating a salad. I was eating something healthy. Every time you saw me, I was on my way to the gym or coming back from the gym or meeting up for a business meeting or doing these things. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think you're just going to blatantly ignore me and go, I don't want any of that? You would probably go, dude, what are you working on? You would probably get more involved in all the things that I'm doing because I'm influencing your behavior in a healthy way. This is why I do not forgive anybody in my past that directly contributed to my alcoholism. You saw it happening and you decided to help me die. That's, oh, through no fault of your own. Yeah, God, you had your own problems. It's not, I'm not your responsibility. I get it. But you hold no room in my future. I don't care how good of a person you are today. I don't care what you're up to how much of a, 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 an incredible human being you might be. I don't want them to welcome me into their life either. There's no room for people in the past that directly contributed or influenced us in an unhealthy way. There's billions and billions and billions and billions of people on this planet. One person or a group of people do not hold more weight other than what we give them. They do not have to be here. I do not have a healthy relationship with my father. He can go off and do his own thing. I know the hundreds of people who don't have relationships with people that they grew up with. 
It's okay to evolve. It's okay to grow out of contact and grow out of a friendship. Remember, the worst thing that can ever happen to us is an emotion. I don't miss those people. I miss the feeling I had when we were drinking together. There are times, still to this day, four years later at the time of this recording, where I look back and go, I remember laughing so hard with that person. We were drinking, we were doing this thing. I could not stop. I have very, very healthy memories. It just sucks that it was with that unhealthy person. That sucks. I don't miss the person. I miss the feeling I had when I was laughing my ass off. That's a feeling that I can easily generate on my own. I laugh, we laugh anytime you want. You wanna, you wanna laugh? We can laugh, I'm not gonna laugh right now. <laughs> there we go, see? I didn't even mean to, I just thought about laughing and then it popped out, see what I'm saying? <laughs> I'll drink to that. When you're laughing, when you're having a good time, you actually operate 30% better. This is why you're learning and growing, is because we're having a good time, right? That's the whole point. This is why we wanna create healthy environments with healthy people or people that are receptive to healthy information like yourself. Because when you feel good, you share that energy, you create joy, you operate from a happy place. Do you think all the gains that I have in the gym are because I was upset? I'm one of the, I'll say this, people recognize me in the gym because I'm the happiest one in the room. And it's not because I'm in a room with all these people, it's because I choose to live a happy life. That's what I like to do. I like to live happy, be happy, do happy, share happy. Happiness is only real when shared. That's why I'm sharing my happiness with you. It feels right. If there's people in your past that do not sit well with the person that you're becoming, the person that you are now, they don't need an explanation. They don't, there's no obligation for you to explain yourself. You don't have to allow someone in your life because they were there. We talked about this in week one. Acceptance, you don't have to accept their behavior. Nope, I don't accept the fact that they did that. I recognize they did that, but I don't accept their apology. I don't accept anything. I don't have to accept you. You're you, dude, I am me. You've accepted me at my core and I've accepted you at your core. That's why we're here, we're healthy for each other. It makes sense. For your future, this makes sense. I'm sure you could think of people that could not and would not benefit from this conversation because they're an unhealthy person. They're not in a place to help you grow. So they don't deserve your time, your energy. Over time, you will be able to allow the right people in. And that doesn't always mean you have to get rid of everybody. It does mean that what would healthy you accept? What does healthy you accept? What does future you, who is the future you surrounded by? Is it surrounded by people like me? Or is it surrounded by people like you're familiar with? As you move forward, you're opening up, you're recognizing your strengths and your power. You're recognizing all these character traits in other people and more importantly, the character traits in yourself that you like and that you don't like. You may actually have been the toxic person. I was, absolutely 100% I was the toxic person. As a matter of fact, I still do toxic things. But one of my, one of my favorite people on the planet, I bought two energy drinks. I know I should be offering water, but I offered him an energy drink instead. That's toxic stuff. I don't, he, he said no, rightfully so. And I didn't feel bad that he didn't take it. But the point is, is I was still a, a, an unhealthy influence at that point. Thankfully, he's a healthy person. So he's like, nah, man, I'm cool. Thanks, though. I appreciate it. Word. Awesome. I love it. <laughs> Let's get back to having fun and doing what we do. That's the whole point is even healthy people still carry toxic traits. But that's not a reason for me to beat myself up or you to beat yourself up. That's just practicing toxic thought. It's not going to help us move forward. Simply by accepting the fact that you may be or may have been that toxic person is literally enough for you to go, I know exactly who I don't want to be. And that's exciting. Because that's not who you're going to remain. You're not that person anymore. And you're going to continue to find reasons why I'm right and why you're right and why you're not toxic, why you don't want to practice that behavior. You know that those toxic thoughts and toxic habits and toxic situations 
aren't going to help you become the best version of yourself, so you're not allowing that anymore. It's as simple as that. Super duper powerful. With that, let's move on to the next video.